Hey, what's up? This is Joe. I am uh, just outside of Bozeman, Montana, and uh, I wanted to make this video to share with you the inspiration to one of my favorite movies of all time, Jeremiah Johnson. So if you haven't seen the movie, stop this video right now and go watch it. One of the greatest Western movies uh, ever made, just for the story of the kind of romantic, uh, kind of mountain man uh, sort of mythology. So as it turned out, uh, at the northern terminus of uh, the Beartooth Pass is a little town called Red Lodge, Montana. This is where the legendary figure of uh, John Johnston, also known as Liver Eating Johnston, lived, trapped, hunted, fished, fell in love, suffered uh, unimaginable heartbreak uh, in the mountains, uh, as well as became uh, the first uh, constable of this uh, interesting little town of Red Lodge. And they've actually got his original cabin uh, on display at the visitor center. What I learned uh, through the process was that uh, a lot of the reality of uh, this man didn't necessarily line up with uh, what was in the movie, but uh, but nonetheless, just found him to be uh, just a really interesting character. So I wanted to uh, just extend uh, a very special thank you to the people of Red Lodge for answering all of my questions and taking the time and sort of helped me learn more about this guy. So as always, if you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe. And as usual, I've included an optional donate link in the Dropbox if you'd like to contribute to this project. And also, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm doing this uh, 100 Reels in 100 Days uh, deal. 10 to 20 seconds of uh, whatever happens to be going on uh, wherever I'm at. You're more than welcome to check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the road. After Sturgis, I was faced with the decision of where to go next. One place kept coming to mind. Somewhere I'd been in years past, but hadn't really been able to stay long enough to get a feel for. The town was Red Lodge, Montana, just up from Cody on the Beartooth Highway. It wasn't long after arriving that I began to notice the results of the devastating 2022 Montana floods. Entire sections of Broadway Street had been washed out, and many of the local businesses had suffered the brunt of the impact. This place had made quite an impression on me a few years back. In particular, I was interested in learning more about one of its most infamous inhabitants, the mysterious character of Liver Eating Johnson, a legendary mountain man whose story formed the basis for one of the greatest Western movies of all time, Jeremiah Johnson. Before I could get to any of that, there was a more pressing need of lunch to attend to since I'd just ridden the Beartooth Pass. I stopped by the Prerogative Kitchen, a place whose french fries with tarragon aioli were in and of themselves enough of a reason for coming back. Yeah, this just looks awesome. These are house cut fries with tarragon aioli and uh, some kind of a burger with uh, house made ketchup. I stocked up on water and headed into the woods. There was a spot I remembered staying last time which was close to town with zero cell service. In other words, it was just about perfect. It was in these very mountains where the legendary figure of John Johnston is said to have hunted, trapped, fallen in love, and sought revenge on the Crow Indians after they killed his wife. It wasn't long after setting up that I had some unexpected visitors. One of the most beautiful places in the world, I think. I mean, just look at this. Got this little meadow. I chose to put everything uh, in the trees where I've got a little bit more shade uh, throughout the day. The sun comes up through here and uh, beats down on this area. There's uh, all kinds of tracks uh, leading into there. There's a, a rushing stream uh, going that way. 
presumably contains uh, trout, probably native trout. So right over that way, maybe a couple hundred yards is actually an established campground. There were a couple of reports of uh, black bears uh, snooping around, getting into people's trash and stuff like that. I stashed my food uh, way up in a tree, uh, at least 100 yards over that way. And uh, when I say food, I mean any kind of attractant, any toothpaste, any deodorant, you know, anything that smells uh, even remotely good uh, to a bear goes up in the tree. So it's uh, about 100 yards downwind and 10 feet in the tree. So as you can see, uh, the water that I got uh, out of the well uh, over there at the campground is uh, definitely more of a yellowish kind of a color than this water that I got from the store. And I gotta tell you, I'll take this water right here any day. It's, it's the craziest thing in the world, but this tastes like, I mean, as if you're drinking water straight out of a mountain stream. Versus this, it's just plain old water. It's got no flavor. It just makes me wonder, what are we filtering out of our water? Because this, you can taste all the minerals and the calcium and everything else, uh, and it's got such a good flavor. What are we taking out of our water? So in talking with uh, one of the locals uh, up in town uh, yesterday, he told me there was some moose activity uh, out here. He told me about the black bear activity and uh, actually offered to let me borrow a pistol. Uh, a 40 caliber, but he said uh, his son had just had his 21st birthday and he gave it to him as a birthday present. But uh, I told him, look, uh, I'm not that worried. I'm not uh, basically opening any food or eating anywhere in the immediate vicinity of my camp. Uh, anyway, I did invest in a can of bear spray and I've been practicing with this a little bit. This stuff uh, goes up to 35 feet, they say. I believe it. It makes a pretty big cloud of, uh, of red pepper dust. So basically the way this works is Luckily, this tab uh, glows in the dark. This is actually uh, pretty handy if you're uh, sleeping with it right beside you, but uh, you just pull that back and then the thing's ready to go. It's definitely a good idea to, when you get this to, uh, to practice with it and shoot off a, a short burst. Yeah, so you can see it's uh, pretty powerful stuff. Once you're ready to put the safety back, just do like that. Wow, you can smell that stuff, pretty strong. If you do happen to pick up a can of bear spray, it's probably a good practice to keep a mental note of where it is at all times. You don't ever want to have to be in a situation where you're looking for it, especially not with the grizzly the size of a Volkswagen staring you down. In spite of the healthy grizzly and black bear populations, I was feeling pretty comfortable about camping out here. I wanted to get the full skinny on the current bear situation, as well as report the elk activity I'd seen the evening before, so I headed to the ranger station in town. So this is the ranger station. I uh, always like to come by here uh, when I'm camped out in Wyoming, Montana, this whole area. Uh, these guys are typically really cool about uh, explaining uh, what the lowdown is as far as the bear situation, the moose, and uh, as far as precautions that you need to take and things like that. I don't know if it has to do with the flooding or not, but it does seem like there's been a lot of activity up the West Fork Road this year. Well, okay. This more than yeah. Normal, yeah. 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 So. The road's closed right here, so yeah, they're, they're kind of yep. enjoying their yep. alone time back yep. there. I think. Okay. <laughs> a couple years ago, I stayed uh, back between Basin Lakes and Cascade, somewhere oh, yeah, off of there. there. Yeah, but you know, I found a pretty good spot um, yeah, across the big mud puddle yeah, uh, the out big there. Mud puddle area. That's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. Spot. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah, a lot of people miss it. So as far as like bear safety in a tent, I got my food tied in a tree 100 yards away, 10 feet off the ground, downwind. Is there anything else that you would suggest? You know, one thing I guess I forgot to mention, if you uh, get really like sweaty, um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> that might attract the deer and elk. They really? really? Like, they really like salt. Um, okay. Like so just don't leave like shoes or something outside. Keep really? Them inside your tent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So put them inside the tent. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Or, yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, they'll eat your shoes. Okay. <laughs> so 
So just on the thing. <laughs> I, yeah, I kind of like my shoes yeah. uh, right where they're at. So awesome. Well, thank you guys for answering my questions. One more question. Is there anything you could tell me about liver eating Johnson? <laughs> you know, I don't know much about him, honestly. It's a roundabout at the end of town here. The yep. cabin. That's yep. actually his, his house. Yep. <laughs> yep. So okay. that's all I know, though. Yep. I'm going to go uh, check that out after I leave here. So. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yep. Since you're still watching this video, you've certainly seen the movie Jeremiah Johnson, and I shouldn't have to explain the plot. But just in case you forgot, it's about the mysterious character played by Robert Redford, who, after being disillusioned by human civilization, heads into the woods to become a mountain man. Despite having a rocky start, he learns to thrive in the Rockies, living off the land, taking a Native American wife, and adopting a son. All is bliss until a group of Christian missionaries approach him about leading them to a stranded caravan in the snow. The plot thickens when the missionaries insist on taking a shortcut through sacred crow burial ground, an unforgivable offense, and one which Jeremiah pays for in blood when he returns to find his wife and son murdered by the crow. He then embarks on a personal vendetta against the crow, killing as many braves as he can, and if you follow the liver-eating Johnson mythology, subsequently consuming their livers and thereby preventing them from reaching the afterlife. That's the story, anyway. Jeremiah Johnson is like my all time favorite movie. He's awesome. So that's basically who that was based off of. So, so that's his actual cabin? This is his actual cabin. His name was in real life, not Jeremiah Johnson. It was John Johnston. Uh -huh. Jeremiah okay. Johnson was for Hollywood. And he did not look like Robert Redford. <laughs> right. He's probably a little rougher than Robert Redford, I would oh, imagine. Oh boy, he surely yeah. is. So is the story true that uh, he had come into Montana to be a mountain man and he had fallen in love with uh, a, a, a Native yes. American lady yes. killed his wife and, they, and they son. They came and killed his wife and son. That was the cabin they were in. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. So he didn't burn it down afterwards, no. like in the movie. No. Okay. So where where was that cabin originally located before it was here? It was downtown um, Armory Park. Is that the name of it? I think so. There's, there's a bunch of not old cabins like that, but other cabins yeah. there. But that's where it was originally, deep in the woods. Wow. If you watch the movie again, yeah. Yeah. you can recognize that it's Red Lodge. Really? It's, yeah, you can see that it's Red oh, Lodge. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That is so awesome. Is it possible to see the inside? All you can do is look in. The okay. door's broken. It used to be open, but you, you could peek in. Okay. There we can see. Not exactly the Ritz. But if you're living in Montana, to be able to live and survive in a cabin like this throughout the uh, harsh uh, Montana winter takes a special kind of person. It's going to be in the front, I believe, because he's like our star. Okay. That's him. And he's a little bit less scruffier than that. Yeah, he's... Is that it? He doesn't look too much like Robert Redford. <laughs> yeah, and the he, states fought over him. He's... Uh, a little bit more like what you'd expect a mountain man to look yes. like. And I'll tell you a thing about him. At our library here, there's a book called Crow Killer. And it's got dates, I mean, factual statements from people. And it's much bullshit. Yeah. But uh, it tells a story about <laughs> they kidnapped him after he supposedly killed all these braves. Yeah. Took him way deep into the bear tooths. Okay. And it was deep snow, middle of winter. And they took his shoes, his boots, so he couldn't escape. So they had a brave watching him, and he knocked that brave out, stuck a knife in his hip joint, cut that leg off, threw it off his shoulder, put his boots on, and that's what he lived on getting out of there was that leg. <laughs> so is that one of the true stories or one of the... I think it's all crap, because <laughs> if you read about him, the real story, he was a yeah. really funny, really well-liked man. Right, right. Really good with kids. And he got the story, Liver Eaton Johnson, because he came back into town after he had skinned an elk. Okay. And on his knife, there was a piece of flesh. And that's when all the Indian children were like, what did you do? He told him he had just killed a brave and, and cut his liver out and proceeded to start eating it before <laughs> he died. And that's how he got the name. He and didn't do that. <laughs> he didn't really do that. So that story, it has some significance because allegedly, according to the native traditions, they weren't able to pass into the afterlife without their liver intact, right? Oh, yes. 
So it was kind of a big F you to the, yep. yeah. I don't, I don't know if he did it to one of them. I doubt it because yeah. he was known for being super friendly and nice, but they did kill his wife and child, his adopted child. And the, he buried them somewhere back here in the hills in the rocks. And they've never found that. Wow. There's three states that fought over his body when he died. Really? I think Wyoming got him. Or part of him. Uh, really? They, I mean, part they of had him? him dug up. They <laughs> moved his bones and everything fighting over him. So he was buried okay. in a veteran cemetery, I think, in Wyoming now. Okay. But this right here will tell you all about him. Okay. What's the name of this book? Okay. Yeah, these are all... It's all. It's our little wow. town as it formed and grew. Yeah, he was our first constable, which I believe is just another word for sheriff. You're going to go down on Broadway. It's 107 Broadway, I believe. Okay. And there's stairs to go up to it. Yep. And just go in, go all the way to the back, and there's a plaque there. Although the stories didn't quite match up with the facts, there was no doubt that John Johnston was a character. I went to the Carbon County Sheriff's Office to see the plaque on the wall. There he is, right up there. This is uh, Liver Eating Johnson Memorial Park. And uh, still got some of the descendants of uh, the turkeys that uh, the man himself used to hunt. Look at that, pretty incredible. Just free range turkeys. Uh, In spite of everything I'd learned, I was no less mystified by this grizzled man of the Rockies. He'd come to these mountains to trap and hunt, and along the way had come to know extremes in hardship, success, and heartbreak. It was with these things in mind I headed to my own abode deep in the mountains. I'll leave you with the words of Del Gu in the movie Jeremiah Johnson. These here is God's finest sculpturings, and there ain't no laws for the brave ones, and there ain't no asylums for the crazy ones, and there ain't no churches except for this right here, and there ain't no priests except in the birds. By God, I are a mountain man, and I'll live till a bullet or an arrow finds me. Here's hoping you keep your hair, and we'll see you next time. Dog's working, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs>